Um, they have a debit cattle operation. And their goals were to cut costs and, and, and get information on improving their conservation programs. So conservation for these folks was very, very important. And again, if, if you looked at the beginning, Aaron was looking at profits and forage production. Cliff was looking at, at um, uh, moving the farm into the next generation and having a, a, a viable management team. Dick was looking at protect, protecting it for his heirs. Aaron and, and uh, Anita and Reed were looking at how to get quality of life. So all of these folks are doing the same process with kind of different value-based decisions and getting to the same positive outcome. So Dave and Luce came back after the end of the year and they said, we're thinking, we think we're seeing more bird and small animal life, which was important to them. And the grass is definitely thicker and have more stockpile than ever before. They also said, they, they went through I was, I was kind of teasing them when I saw them in September of last year because they were complaining about the drought that they've been through. Um, you, you probably have heard in the national news, in Texas, we had a drought. Hundred and over 100 degrees for something like 45 days. Um, one day we got up to 114. This is north central Texas, folks. This is not the Sonoran Desert. This is not Arizona. Rain was great in the spring. It stopped in June. I lost a 45 tree pecan orchard last summer because of the heat drought. It just couldn't survive. So when they were complaining about their drought, I had to give them some gentle ribbing for that. But one of the things that was important to note is that when they had started managing their pastures better, Dave and Lou said, eh, I wasn't quite so sure of this whole thing. They were, they were kind of pursuing this on an intellectual basis. And it, it made sense to them that they weren't quite internal believers yet. And so when they started managing their pastures differently through this, through this drought that they were having, everybody got very nervous. But they shared with me that their grass came back a whole lot quicker than their neighbors. And even across the fence line. And, and suddenly their neighbors started perking up because they thought they were crazy, putting all their herds together and running them around in a circle and rotating and all this stuff. Everybody thought they were just nuts. And now people are like, whoa, wait, what are you doing? And they're like, well, you must be fertilizing. I said, no, we're not, we're not fertilizing. Well, what are you doing differently? A full six weeks earlier than everybody else, they had grass come back. And at the same time, they saved $800 on diesel and $1,000 on fish oil fertilizer. Okay, so, I mean, these are small numbers, but this is in nine months of operation. So think about that. And as things start to, you know, steamroll and get going and going, it gets better every year. So that's, that's a series of successes. And, and like I said at the, at the beginning of this presentation, I love my job. You know, when people say things are going to heck in a handbasket, I have so many people that I work with that feel exactly the opposite. The opportunities are wide open out there. And, and the chance to control your destiny by not believing the naysayers is significant. The sense of control you get when you know that you can plan for it. It doesn't mean life isn't hard. It doesn't mean things aren't challenging or even stressful. But imagine if you think you're going broke or you think that somebody else controls your destiny. That's a whole different kettle of fish. So whole farm planning is a tool for a variety of objectives as I've just um, showed you. To make the land more productive. To provide a plan for succession for the farm to secure the farm for future generations, to help Im improve communication. That's, that's a weak link quite often. It's amazing. That, as much as I know holistic management, my husband and I sometimes are still at sixes and sevens, and I suspect I'm not the only one. Improved decision making. We all like to think we're great decision makers. It's sort of like we're all good drivers, right? Um, Clearly, some of us are not, even if we think so. And I suspect it's the same way with decision making. But we can all get better at it. And then improve our conservation programs. We are part of the whole. We like to believe we're not, but we are. This group knows that. That's already put you ahead of things. And with that, I'd like to end the presentation.